Hello everybody, I'm Trent. I'm Allie. And this is our channel, Trent and Allie, obviously. Uh, we're making a video for you guys today and it's gonna be based around solar questions. A lot of people want us to explain it in depth. Um, I'm gonna go over a couple products today and kind of discuss why we went the route that we went and why. <laughs> uh, all right, so first I'm just gonna kind of explain how a solar system works. First off, you're gonna have your battery bank. That's where you're gonna store all of your electricity that you're gonna use throughout the day and throughout the night. Now during the daytime when the sun is out, it's hitting the solar panels, they're generating electricity and they're sending it down the lines into the charge controller. The charge controller is what takes this ample amount of energy at different voltage and different amperage and mediates it while charging the batteries. It makes sure that you don't overcharge the batteries. It, it dictates how much electricity is going into the batteries at any given time. You have to have a charge controller in order to charge the batteries. Now, you have this battery bank that's being charged by a solar system and it's producing a bunch of electricity, but it's all 12 volt, which is direct current. And regular outlets or most appliances plug into alternating current or 110 volt. So what you need is an inverter. That takes the direct current and inverts it into alternating current, therefore powering all of your AC outlets in your van or in your house or whatever type of solar system this is connected to. That is basically how a solar system works. Now, when you contact some of these companies and they tell you you need 800 watts of solar or you need 700 amp hours for your battery bank and a lot of people hear these numbers and they think wow that seems like overkill like how come i need so much it's one of the things you have to keep in mind is your solar system needs to produce enough electricity on a day where you get basically no sun to support your electrical usage habits on a day when you need a lot of electricity so it's kind of a, some days you're gonna produce a lot, some days you're not gonna produce very much. Just like some days in your house, you might use a lot of electricity or you might not use a lot of electricity. If they tell you you only need 600 watts of solar and then on a day where it's cloudy like today, you don't produce any electricity, but you use a lot of electricity and you end up draining your battery down, you're gonna go back to that company and say, oh, well that, you know, that 600 watts or 500 watts of solar wasn't enough. Why didn't you guys tell me to get more? So they always oversize your system for that rainy day, no pun intended. I'm a firm believer in having a system that is sufficient. I don't need it to be something that's gonna produce a ton of electricity even when it's snowing outside. So we went with 600 watts of solar on our roof and a 700 amp hour battery bank. We also have a voltage sensing relay that charges off the alternator and also charges the battery bank when we're driving the van. And that's something that can help you on those cloudy or rainy days if you're like really in a pickle and you need to use your electricity and the battery bank has died. So I don't forget at the end of the video, I'll tell you now, we're gonna link all the items in the description if you guys wanna check out any of the items we use in our solar system or any of the other products that I go over, links to all those things will be in the description. Trent used to work for a solar company, so I basically just trust his judgment on this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we have <laughs> AGM batteries. Uh, there's a couple different routes you can go with batteries. Um, you can go flooded lead acid, you can go sealed lead acid or AGM, and then you can also go with lithium. Flooded are not good because you gotta like constantly top them off with water. They can spill, they're hazardous, they have to be vented. Sealed and, and AGM batteries are what we went with. The reason we went with the AGMs is because lithium ion is probably the best option, but it's the most expensive. And to get the same size battery bank, you're looking at three or four times the cost. Our battery bank is 700 amp hours, which is pretty large. And it cost us, I think $1,300 or $1,200 to get 700 amp hours with lithium or even 350 amp hours with lithium is like three to four thousand dollars if you're making a huge investment and it's going to be your house maybe it's something you want to spring for we went with the agm because like i said it's cheap they're easy to replace maybe we'll do lithium in the future but agm works just fine so we have the stationary rigid solar panels that are from renogy there's also a lot of these companies like sueyoki 
which is a solar panel manufacturer. They make these flexible panels, which have a lot of pros and cons. So if you've seen our van tour, our solar panels stick up above the roof quite a bit because the top of a van roof is curved. All van roofs are slightly curved. And when a panel's flat, it's, it's gonna be sticking up. Like it, in order for it to be close in the middle, it's gonna stick up on the edges. Then you have the frame, it's a lot of wind resistance. These flexible flat solar panels, I mean, you can see how flat that thing is. It's like five sheets of paper thick. You can literally Sikaflex or self-tapper these to the roof. You can fit way more of these panels. They're flexible and they're cheap. They're really inexpensive to buy. Uh, there'll be a link to Sueyoki's 100 watt panel, which is this, uh, also in the description. Some of the cons are gonna be, they don't produce as much power. I mean, I would say in the 80 to 90% range is some of the rigid panels, but they're just, they're almost there with the quality, but not quite yet. And then also, they don't last as long. Uh, I've seen nothing but reviews about flexible panels that deteriorate quicker. So when you buy something cheaper, it's not gonna last as long, you're gonna have to fix it or replace it sooner. So just one of those things you kinda wanna keep in mind. So the solar panels that we went with are Renogy's 300 watt solar panels. Uh, we went with the two 300 watts, we have 600 watts of solar total. That charges our 700 amp hour battery bank, which is two 350 amp hour batteries that are wired in parallel. So it's a 12 volt system. When you install these battery banks, you can either do a 12 or a 24 volt system. Whether you do a 12 or a 24 volt, your inverter needs to be a 12 or a 24 volt inverter. So keep that in mind when you're purchasing all your items if you're gonna go one way or the other. The way that the solar panels are set up is they're on an MPPT charge controller, which is a charge controller that can take in up to like 105 volts. So every time you take a 12 volt solar panel and you wire them in series, it adds the voltage. So that's a 12 volt, a second one would be 24, a third one would be 36, a fourth one would be 48. Our panels are 24 volt panels. So two of them wired in series makes a 48 volt system. Now, if we had a PWM charge controller, or PMW, I think it's PWM. I'm not 100% sure. I just know they're, they're not good. You don't want them. A uh, PWM charge controller, you can only have like uh, up, to, up to 14 volts or whatnot. So you can only wire in parallel. And you don't get a lot of power out of that because if you wire four panels in parallel, any extra electricity that they're sending over the 14 volts, the PWM charge controller just kind of wipes it off and wastes it. Whereas an MPPT charge controller, you wire them in series and it only produces 14 volts, but it'll produce it at like 35 amps or 40 amps, which is like a much higher rate of charging than with the PWM at 14 volts and maybe like six or seven amps. So it's very technical. It might be kind of confusing to you, but don't, don't give up. It's confusing to everybody at first. Just get an MPPT charge controller and don't ask questions. Um, there's plenty of cheap ones out there. There's a lot of really expensive ones. We went with... Uh, Make Sky Blue. We went with the Make Sky Blue. They're like these ones that are made in China that have really good reviews they're really cheap and they work really well so i don't complain um, they're also very small they take up like hardly any space and it's been working beautifully so far no issues whatsoever some of the other mppt charge controllers that are the same amperage are like four or five times the size so keep that in mind when you're shopping for your charge controller as well Inverters come in different sizes, um, usually based on an RMS or a continuous power output, like 2000 watts continuous power with like a four or a 6000 power surge. So a lot of appliances, when you plug them in and turn them on, they'll draw a thousand watts. And then once they've already started up, they go down to like four or 500 watts. This is totally common. That's why you want to have an inverter that has a high surge capability but it has a pretty reasonable RMS or continuous power output. There's you know, sine wave inverters, there's pure sine wave inverters. We went with an Ames pure sine wave inverter because it's gonna run things like computers, laptops, anything with high voltage charging or uh, you know, really sophisticated batteries or electronics, 
generally always require a pure sine wave inverter. Now there are some modified pure sine wave inverters and some of those really don't work as good as a pure sine wave inverter. So you've got to make sure that you're getting a quality product if you want it to work, like I said, with your laptops, your cameras, um, charging equipment, things like that. Espresso machines. Your espresso machine. <laughs> now, what I got into before was the battery bank, inverter, charger, solar panels. Those are four different components that you have to have in order to set up a solar system in your van, unless you have one special item. And that is Goal Zero, it's their Yeti. They've kind of pioneered this whole category where it's this self-contained unit that's a battery, it's a charge controller, and it's an inverter. And it's pretty revolutionary. It's a lithium ion battery, so they don't have to be huge. They can support a lot of power. Um, they're pretty darn expensive because it's a lithium ion battery. But like I said, it covers those three components all in one. Now Jackery is a different company, and this is a very small version of the Yeti. Um, it basically has an input where you can charge with solar, you can charge with plugging it into an AC outlet, or you can plug it into like a car lighter. Um, if you plug this into like a solar panel or a couple solar panels, this could literally be your house battery. This battery is actually relatively small, so unless you're just running like lights and charging phones and a laptop, you might want something bigger. Like I said, Goal Zero makes like a Yeti 1400, which is like four or five times this size. But this thing can charge USBs, it can charge cigarette lighters, it can charge, I mean, you can plug in AC outlets into this, so you can plug a surge protector in, hook up a TV, hook up an Xbox, run all of that off of just this little handheld portable battery inverter charger system. So if you get uh, one of the outlets that'll plug into your female and male ends on your solar panels, you can plug right into this guy. That is also a really good option for a lot of people. For what we wanted to use our house battery and our solar for, we needed a way bigger system. So the Yeti 1400, it wasn't gonna cut it. And it's really expensive. And you are kind of restricted with what you can do because you only have so many outlets, you only have such amount of space. I mean, this is still something that you can use for portable power. So we can plug this in and if we want to go camping or we want to go to the beach or we want to go somewhere and have portable electricity, this is something that we can take with us. It weighs maybe eight or nine pounds. It's like super light and it'll power your devices pretty much all day. So these are pretty reasonable. Uh, they go for like a couple hundred bucks, I think on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description to that as well. Um, but like I said, that's just another option that people go for with solar. Uh, if you guys have questions about sizing your system, a lot of people get really scared of trying to do all those equations and things like that. And my motto, rather than try to plan everything out and think it's perfect, because in reality it's probably not going to be even if you plan it to be perfect, is set up a system that you think is sufficient and then just leave room to add batteries or add solar panels if you need it down the road. That's literally the safest way to go and it's the easiest. If you just wanted to run some regular appliances that are under a thousand watts, you know, charge some laptops, run some, uh, charge your phones, run some LED lights, things like that, you probably only need like 400 amp hours of battery power. And if you're gonna do lithium, you probably need two to 250 amp hours of battery power. So that's sizing your battery bank. And then your solar, there's gonna be equations with how much solar you need in order to feed a battery bank that big. And then like I said, just make sure you leave room to add more batteries to your battery bank if that's something that you think you're gonna need in the future. The reason we have 700 amp hours is because we run an espresso machine that takes almost 2000 watts. <laughs> So it's definitely something that you're gonna want to uh, think over, but don't obsess over it. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I don't mind helping people out or helping you guys answer questions when you're in a pickle, so. If you enjoyed watching me sit here during this video and learned something during this video, please go ahead and give this a like down yeah. below. Um, if you're not already subscribed to Trenton Alley, we would super appreciate that as well. Anything, any last words? 
good luck on your van build. Yeah. And hopefully you guys come back and enjoy some of our other videos. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Bye.